Hi, ho everyone. My name is Carrie Quinn. This is a random review that I'm doing on my channel. We're just going to go ahead and call it Rando Reviews. Random, Rando Reviews. And Rando Reviews can be anything. Rando Reviews can be I read something and or I watched something or I listened to something and I want to tell you guys about it. Um, if you're wondering, uh, you know, the, the elephant in the room, where has the OUG been? Where's Carrie been? Um, if you want a little bit of an explanation, check out my Instagram. I don't want to get into it here. I just want to give you the reviews. That's why you're here. And that's why you've come here before. So let's talk rando reviews. So rando reviews is basically, I experienced something and I'm going to tell you about it. And um, so let's just get into it. We're just going to call it Rando Reviews on the Officially Unofficial Geek Channel. Um, again, my name is Carrie, if you've never been here before. And this time on Rando Reviews, the first installment of Rando Reviews, though, I do argue random reviews are kind of a thing for me, I do admit. Um, random reviews. We're going to call it rando reviews. Yes. Let's get into it. Um, this first edition of rando reviews is brought to you by kingdom come. Pause for. Yes, folks. I read Kingdom Come, and when I say I read Kingdom Come, I mean DC Comics Elseworlds Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross, uh, printed in 1996 by DC Comics. Um, let's not forget that letterer. Let's throw their name in there, Todd Klein. So we've got Mark Wade, writer extraordinaire, award-winning writer extraordinaire, Alex Ross, award-winning, you know, artist. I don't know for sure. Is Alex Ross, I, he has to be. He has to be an award-winning artist. So we'll just say Alex Ross and letterer Todd Klein. Okay, so check this out. Um, I read a collected edition of Kingdom Come um, by Mark Wade and Alex Ross and company. And I read it on my... PSA, my Libby app brought to you by the Indianapolis public library, support your public library. Okay. So the Libby app, um, public library, uh, thank you. Indianapolis Pub public library, not a sponsor, nor would I think they would ever stoop to any kind of level. Um, to sponsor anything I do, except for the fact that they give me free stuff to read. All I have to do is return it on time and I don't have to pay a thing. They give me a card. They give me free stuff. I return it on time and we're good. You know, um, the Libby app is absolutely wonderful. So there's things that might not be available in the actual library. Um, but they have these apps where you can read stuff digitally. So you've got Canopy, um, where you can watch stuff. You got Hoopla where you can read stuff and watch stuff. And you have Libby where you can read stuff. And I happen to just kind of be like, okay, what do I want to read on Libby? And I came across, um, as people do <laughs> to Kingdom Come and I read it. So this edition of Kingdom Come is a re-release edition. So it has extra stuff in it. We're not going to really be covering the extra stuff in it, except for the fact that it's cool. Um, this is about four issues um, in published in DC Comics, like I said, in 1996. And plus a extra, you know, epilogue kind of situation. So let's talk about kingdom come. So basically this is an else world's tale, which basically means if I said basically a lot, I basically say basically a lot, basically, basically, 
basically, I say basically a lot, basically. <sighs> You're a writer, Carrie. You're a writer. Try to come up with other language. Try to do this. Okay. So, essentially, essentially, this is a Elseworlds tale, like I believe I already mentioned. And this Elseworlds tale is uh, kind of like a um, future-based tale where we find out um, that Superman and other uh, members of the main justice, uh, justice league have kind of retired, so to speak in a way. And, um, what we have here is, okay, so let's start from the beginning. We have, I don't want to give too many spoilers away. I want you to go ahead and experience kingdom come like I did, but I'm going to give you the basis of where you're going to find yourself in the beginning of the tale. Um, what we have here in the be very beginning is a scene where you're seeing Wesley Dodd's Sandman. That's pretty cool because we just had the Wesley Dodd Sandman, um, the Wesley Dodd Sandman uh, uh, miniseries. Um, comic issue miniseries that, um, that was pretty cool. I really liked that. Um, it, we just had that happen. It just ended like a few months back. It's pretty good stuff. If you never read it, check it out. Um, I'm pretty sure it has a trade now, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but be on the lookout or go to your local comic book shop and see if they can pull together that six issue set for you. Um, regardless, it was great. I really enjoyed that anyways. So you have an older Wesley Dodds, uh, Sandman, and he is having these visions of an apocalyptic, um, scene to come. Okay. So, and he, um, confides in his pastor, uh, Norman, uh, McCray. Now we find Norman, uh, first, like I said, speaking with Wesley Dodds. Um, and Wesley is telling him about this apocalyptic, uh, scene to come involving, you know, angels from the heavens and fighting each other. And it's like heroes fighting each other now. Now, Wesley Dodd, um, he dies and spoiler alert, he dies. This is right at the beginning of the story, guys. Don't be too pissed at me if you never read it. And Norman, uh, in having this knowledge of what, uh, Wesley was telling him, starts having visions, starts having dreams. And once that starts happening, he is visited by the specter. The specter is kind of like his guide through witnessing all these things up to judgment. Now, what's really interesting about the Spectre like character is it's very much like a um, very reminiscent, I believe, of Charles Dickens, um, where you have a Christmas Carol and that except Norman is kind of watching everything else and watching everything play out in real time. Um, everything that happens in the story, except for. The specter, who is basically a ghost, is sitting there kind of like in um, Charles Dickens' uh, Christmas Carol, is guiding uh, Norman throughout this whole process and showing him everything that he needs to see so that he can come to a final judgment eventually. Um, so that's really interesting to have that kind of like the, the specter um, as like this ghostly, all-knowing guide that's kind of guiding Norman through the whole process of the story. Um, I thought that was really interesting. I thought that the idea of an apocalyptic battle between uh, superheroes, old and new, um, was really interesting in that you can sit there and look at it 
and you can see the idea um the tale old time tale about old versus new um young versus old and the difference that sometimes happens where people have a difference in opinion about how things are supposed to work and how people are supposed to operate through life and and what you do with it um and the the problem that comes from different sides not being able to see each other's way of thinking um it's a very interesting kind of like idea of you know having you know these two two warring two or three sides of the story you know so like you have one person's story and you have the other person's story and somewhere in the middle you find that middle ground and that's kind of where this is like it's like okay there's no middle ground nobody is wanting to give there's no give so they can't make it here you know and that's another one of those themes that you see is is man versus himself and in this case hero versus hero um so that is basically man versus god man versus nature man versus himself could be argued as as overall themes of the story any one of those can be argued as a theme from within the story itself um there's definite no no confusion there's a definite idea um <laughs> where no side is completely right no side is completely wrong until they come and they meet in the middle and compromise which is an interesting idea especially to bring up at this time of year not necessarily this time of year excuse me this time of um our existence you know um right now we have a lot of different things going on a lot of different viewpoints being presented in a world and national stage and it's an interesting story to go back and kind of read and think about like okay we have so much division in in our world in our in our country that <laughs> both sides can't seem to find themselves coming they, they'll get close but then they're away again and then like you know um so really it's one of those things where i guess what i'm coming to is it's a timeless kind of story uh, of epic proportion because you can get something from it and understanding from it no matter what time period you're looking at it from like this story is is true in in what it's trying to tell you now excuse me as it was in 1996 as it was in 1989 as it was in 1959 okay that's one of those you know points like where one of those goals one of those goal posts of a writer is to write something if they're putting it out there and they're looking to to affect people with their writing they want to put something out there that somebody 20 years 50 years 100 years 300 years down the line can say you know what that is timeless that is timeless because i can get what that dude was saying all those years ago with what they were writing and so this really is one of those things that stands the test of time it is timeless in that anyone in any time period if you get into the doctor's uh tardis and you go back 50 years you give somebody kingdom come they're gonna be like you know what i get this um some of the jumping around um so that's big positive okay 
um, potential negatives is some of the jumping around in the beginning of the story, especially <laughs> with the format of reading it digitally, um, might cause a little bit of confusion. Some of the lettering in the digital copy, um, and I would like to, I, I'd honestly like to see the way it looks um, actually on the paper versus the digital to see if that kind of clears it up a little bit. There's sometimes where um, the writing is within boxes so that it's more of a thought-based thing, like you're getting an int introspective look into the, to the character's thoughts. Um, and particularly, most of the time, Norman. Um, sometimes Superman, but most of the time, Norman. You get that introspective thought, uh, you know, look into his thoughts. Well, the, the writing changes. And I'm not talking about the context or content of the writing. I'm saying the style. And this is what I'm talking about in particular, the lettering, um, which there's moments where that happens. And some of it is not necessarily as clear as it probably is on the written page. There's circumstances where... Um, the medium definitely affects how you read it. Um, for instance, when you're reading it on your phone, that's, that's going to be obviously a completely different format than if you're reading it in a book. Um, I've seen circumstances where reading the book is a lot easier to follow in situations like this. And I've also seen the reverse where reading it um, with the page in the book in front of you um, is you can't, you can't understand it. It's, it's, it's hard to see, but then when you read it with the lighted background of the, the device, it's easier to read. So I, I had uh, uh, an example of this is the Batman who laughs. <laughs> A lot of times I, when I read the Batman who laughs, um, it was done in both formats because I had the digital version available to me and I had the print, um, version available to me as well. So what would happen is my throat's getting dry. What would happen is, is I would read, um, on that, I would read on that version, like the, the written version, the book version, um, just wherever I was. Um, and I would use the digital version if I wanted to read in bed, say, for instance. Um, and I found myself that, you know, it did make a difference reading it. <clears throat> Cause there are times where, um, when the Batman who laughs would talk, um, in the book, in the actual like book version, the printed version, we'll say the printed version, uh, it was difficult to read, whereas when I was reading it on the device, be it my phone, it was much easier to read. Um, so I wonder if the reverse is true for this circumstance with Kingdom Come um, and some of the writing that kind of gets a little bit different depending on what you're actually looking at text-wise. Um, major positive. Let's talk about the art. Um, I've always been a fan of, um, Alex Ross's work ever since, um, that first, uh, in continuity, um, cover that I saw the first, the first work that I ever saw that I ever recall seeing of Alex Ross's was actually something that came out after kingdom come initially came out, which would be the first, um, appearance of Harley Quinn in continuity, which is uh, Batman Origins Harley Quinn, number one, um, with that iconic cover of her and the Joker uh, standing together on the, uh, the front uh, cover of the book done by Alex Ross. And obviously, if you've been around Alex Ross, I'm pretty sure doesn't do interiors anymore. If anyone wants to tell me that I'm wrong, Please come tell me that I'm wrong and give me more, uh, more recent, um, ideas of any interiors that Alex Ross has done, um, past, uh, 
1996, uh, let me know. But I know that the man can basically do whatever he wants to involving the cover and people flock to it. Um, what I love about his art style is the hyper realism while it also is kind of not hyper realism. And I love his practice of using actual models to, uh, give him the idea of how to draw what he's doing in the books. And, and one of the things that they do list in the collector's edition, this edition of kingdom come is there's a little list of the different people that participated in doing the modeling as the references for the different characters. And I thought that was really cool. Um, I thought that was really cool that he was put that in out there and put that in there. Like these people, these people, special thanks to these people who are my references for drawing these characters. Um, I love that. And I've seen evidence of that involving um, other stuff that he's posted online when he's been on social media within the last few years, um, talking about different influences that he's had. Um, really, really awesome stuff. And I love that realism um, that you get. It's like a version of realism that's like hyper realism, that's like that kind of realism, but yet it's not. Um, there's still kind of a, a, a fade to it rather than it being like just, you know, in your face completely real, but it's, there's a fade to it. Like it's, it's what I feel like some of the covers, um, from, oh golly, is it action or was it Superman that Steve Beach was doing recently? Steve Beach was doing one of the Superman books and it looked like I, I really was not a fan um, because to me, it kind of, um, it, it didn't, it just didn't look right to me. I wasn't a fan, um, kind of, um, to me when I saw it, I kind of felt like, and then this is just, you know, no judgment either way. Okay. To me, Superman kind of looked like, um, a young Ronald Reagan, um, in those, but then you have like, like, I feel like somebody's like really jumping for that hyper realism with that circumstance. And it didn't work for me. Whereas in this, uh, realism that exists within Alex Ross's art, um, is really kind of just subdued and beautiful at the same time. Major points that I want to give out. I want to get major points for one particular thing. You all know from watching my channel, or if you're new here, Hi, welcome. I'm a big Batman fan. Okay. And in turn, I'm a big Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn fan. And I am a big Selena Kyle Catwoman fan. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, one of the things I absolutely loved in this Alex Ross chef's kiss, when he drew Selena Kyle, his Selena Kyle was an homage to the first appearance of Selena Kyle of, well, let's put it this way. The first appearance of the cat in Batman number one from 1940. We all know, check it out. In my, uh, my past videos, I did a review of the first appearance of Catwoman, which is basically me talking about Batman number one from 1940. Go check it out. It's in my past videos. You won't be sorry. Um, I feel pretty good about it. I feel pretty good about that. I, I, I feel pretty good about my work with it. But anyways, that was one of the things that struck me right away is I knew that that was inspired by that moment. Um, coincidentally, I have from the library also, not this one, this one's different. But I have from the library, I have this. I, I got this, the Batman, um, Bat and the Cat, 80 Years of Romance, which of course has that first issue in it. it has a number of other issues, but I won't talk about that right now because I might talk to you about it another time. Stay tuned. But anyways, guys, um, I really loved, I really, 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 really love that little homage 
that existed within the pages of Kingdom Come for that first appearance of the cat. And it was amazing. It was beautiful. It was like, holy crap. It, you know, I, I, I saw that. I was like, yes. I had a little moment. I had a little moment while reading it. I'm like sitting there looking at my phone. No one really knew what I was doing. And they're like, what is going on over there? But I was like, yes. Oh, yes. But, you know, I, you guys understand. You know, you, you know, too. And you, yeah. Uh, the, the guy back there, the guy where, the, maybe he's seen the video. Maybe he's seen one of my videos for the very first time. He's back there and he knows. He knows how that rocks. Just saying. Overall, that's how I feel about Kingdom Come by Mark Wade, the master, and Alex Ross, the master. Um, both in their own right. Love it. It was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, despite any little small little things and issues that I had with it. Um, read a book. if Read this book if you've never read it before. One. Two. Read it again. Um, if you need a reminder of what we're trying to achieve with mankind now. What, what should be our ultimate goal is to find that place where we can all exist together. And we can all be free and we can all be happy and hopeful. Especially right now. But that's going to deal. This is going to be the end of this random review. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Carrie Quinn. I'm the Officially Unofficial Geek. This is the Officially Unofficial Geek channel. Please check me out in other spaces. You'll hear, see me here, there, everywhere. In chats, in live streams, all that stuff. And keep, you know, keep on plugging here. Because... I'm, I'm glad to be back. This has been a lot of fun telling you about Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross. And this has been Rando Reviews. Thank you so much. Until next time, keep your eyes and ears open. If you see something, say something. Remember, the complacent never make a difference. So go out there in 2024. We're here right now. And make a difference. Until next time, I'll be seeing ya. Bye-bye.